being born with both female and male characteristics is surprisingly common. But this comes with a lot of stigma and discrimination against intersex persons because they are widely misunderstood. In today's edition of News in Depth, Efim Pande looks at the challenges that intersex persons face and what is being done to address their needs. I'm your host, Ruth Kamui. Stay tuned. It is often widely assumed that the world is divided into two groups of people, male and female. There is also an assumption that everyone's biological and genetic characteristics fit into one of these two groups of people. But this is not the case. There are millions of people around the world that do not fit into the two categories. And these are intersex persons. These are individuals that possess both male and female external or internal uh, genital organs, causing confusion from the true sex of that individual. Intersex, um, I should say, should be defined directly, you know, with the intention to uh, make it unique from conditions that you can mistake intersex for. And these conditions I'm talking, I mean, I, I'm alluding to are uh, things like transgender or homosexuality, um, lesbian. These are not intersex. Humans are born with 46 chromosomes in 23 pairs. The X and Y chromosomes determine a person's sex. What we have to understand is that the both male and female internal organs would have started developing. And when I say developing, they would develop somewhere at the back. Okay? That's where. And then they start descending downwards. For the male, eventually they end up outside the body. For the female, they remain inside the pelvis. But when it comes to intersex, what exactly happens? For example, there's a lot of male hormones what may happen is that the female child now starts taking the form of a male. But yet the other internal organs may be there. But yet genetically the other there, they're still female. Or vice versa. What may happen is that they may also, if it's a male child, but due to lack of that male hormone in their system, now what happens is that as they are also developing, because that is a stimulant, that whole process of fully developing into a male is also lacking, and so they take the form of a female. Usually ambiguous genitalia are obvious at or shortly after birth. But medical experts say sometimes a person can live their whole life without ever discovering that they are intersex. It could be picked at birth. Someone is a baby, newly born baby is born, and then you notice that the genitalia is not normal, then that's a case of DSD. Sometimes they present at puberty where, you know, there's inappropriate or delayed pubertal development. Sometimes, you know, someone might even get married, okay, but then uh, they have or face the problem of um, inability to bear children, which we call infertility. Intersex babies are always assigned a legal sex, but sometimes when they grow up, their gender does not match the sex selected for them. This is Mpaso Sakala, 23 years ago. Mpaso was raised as a girl. When I was young, I could uh, easily pass as a girl or a, a boy. But when I reached puberty, somewhere around 12, I started, my body just started uh, changing. I was looking, slowly, gradually looking more on the male side. But at what point did Mpaso realize that he was intersex? I was identified as a female. And here I was, I was carrying uh, female documentation. So for me, I started asking questions. So if I'm attracted to females, then how would that be? Because our laws will not allow. That's when a, a lot of questions started coming in. And I also started asking my parents to understand why is it that I was raised female. Mpaso was born at the University Teaching Hospital on 3rd May 1986. His mother, Catherine, has seven children. Mpaso is the firstborn child. 
Pauline Bana and the hospital window papa. In a piece of a good thing, I come to Namana, Natimana Branch, at two Uzamuona. So after that, Nabana fitting, since I've not stick. After Nabana Veraco Bueno, and then Telamana, Natimana no one more than a tin and so, Having a child with ambiguous genitalia can be distressing for the family. Why? So, foot in egg and a bun, who After the choker, there's an end of my review and pass my appointment. You know, to tell me. There are different types of intersex or disorder of sexual development. An individual may be born with the external genitalia, male, internally, they are carrying ovaries like a female. And these are the ones that we see most common, whereby the female has the ovaries, but the external genitalia is male-like. And you find that there is even no opening linking the outside to the uterus inside. Then the other form we see are those that tend to have testicles, male uh, garments. Outside they are appearing like a female. And you find that they may not have, even the womb is missing. Then the other group that we see are those that possess both the ovaries and the testicles. Being born with a blend of female and male characteristics is surprisingly common. We have currently on the register um, close to probably 400 children that we're following you know, clo uh, uh, closely. Now, as I said, these children have many other conditions. So we are some saying that close to about a third of these 400 children that we're following have ambiguous genitalia. This is a common condition. There are no documented statistics in our clinic, but we see such patients quite often. And uh, most of the time, we see them be present late to, to, to us. Whichever way you look at it, intersex persons face stigma and discrimination in all facets of their life. Uh, you find that even in the neighborhood, people would uh, call you all sorts of names because they didn't even understand who I was. They just understood here is a girl who is just trying to behave like a boy. At school, it, it, it was also a challenge because, um, in short, I would say people never understood because even in as much as I was raised female, I never carried myself as one. So it was sort of uh, confusing even for for the community. It, it was very tough because I remember my first job I got a job as an IT technician at the same time as a teacher. Now imagine I have to be in front of uh, pupils. Here I am, I'm trying to, to align myself with how society perceives me. And at the same time, I have to also adjust to how I understand myself. So it was sort of a battle. Globally, most legal jurisdictions recognize two traditional gender identities, but tend to exclude any other identity. But this is slowly changing. Last month, Kenya became the first country in Africa to recognize people who identify their gender as intersex during a census. The third category will be listed among male and female on census forms. A human rights lawyer now looks at the classification of gender in Zambia. In Zambia, like almost many other places in the world, there are only two classifications of um, gender that are recognized by the law and also by the constitution as the supreme law. And this is uh, the classification of either male or classification of female. But um, as, as, you, as you would know, there is also what is called the third gender, the classification which is not particularly recognized by the law, but which actually exists due to uh, different variants in, in, in the biological makeup of a person. And those are intersex uh, people. That is people that cannot fit 
within the normal classification of male and female. But what challenges does this present with? It's legal on the one hand and it is social on the other hand. Social in the sense that people have not been socialized to accept or appreciate the fact that there are intersex people living within our community or within our society. So that social impact and that social effect also leads us to a legal uh, problem that we have, which is having an actual legal recognition in the law. You will realize, for example, that when you are signing any form, it will either be M or F. But there are people who do not identify as either M or F due to no fault of their own, but to the biological makeup. When our laws were being uh, enacted, they didn't take into account some of these different variants of, uh, you know, of human sexuality and you know, the, the dynamic nature of the human body. And as such, the law as it stands is not as responsive as it should be to these different uh, variants of, of, you know, of human sexuality and, you know, and the human, human body. In terms of um, protecting the rights of this particular person, I think there's need to be sensitive, first of all, to the fact that they didn't choose to get naturally. What they can choose is to do something about it, but not to be discriminated against. I do know that there are instances where they have challenges in obtaining legal documents because they must choose male or female if they are both what does that particular uh, provision say. Initially, Mpaso was known as Frida. In 2017, he had to change the gender on his national registration card, NRC, from female to male. When I went to high court at first, when I tried to explain, they were like, such a thing cannot be done here. So I had to emphasize to ask, do you really understand what I am asking or what I'm talking about? No, let's, let's, let's just uh, look at me direct you to this office. So I had to explain step by step. And luckily, the person I found had um, a sister who was born intersex as well. So he easily understood. So from there, that's when we started with the, the paperwork. And uh, so after I'd started seeing the doctors, so tests were done on me, a medical report was done. And that's, those are the documents I had to use to go to high court and have my name changed, uh, have my sex marker changed as well. Then also went to the National Registration Card offices and also had to change my my NRC. The Department of National Registration, Passport and Citizenship in the Ministry of Home Affairs is responsible for issuing identity documents such as birth certificates, national registration cards, passports and death certificates among others. Sex assignment of an intersex person may also contradict their future identity. What happens in an event that an individual wants to change their gender on the NRC? We haven't yet come across uh, such instances. Uh, our job is to, to record particulars of individuals as they give us. And so uh, when you come to us, I'm Efim Pande, uh, I was born on such a date, uh, I'm female, that's what we record on the identity documents, so we do not give people uh, details to record, but they give us the details uh, that we record on the identity documents. Back at the UTH Women and Newborn Hospital, I was keen on finding out what midwives record in the birth register when an intersex baby is born. They usually consult as the obstetricians or the medical doctor in areas where there are no obstetricians, and they will come closer to what is a close to that sexual appearance. And in most cases, like I elaborated, most are given the gender of female. And that is what we call the legal sex assigned at birth. Intersex people have for a long time suffered from pain, stigma, and discrimination, and human rights defenders are calling for a stop to this. There is need for some form of legal reform so that the law can be responsive you know, to the plight and the needs of, of intersex people. We want to really also urge our medical um, 
personnel, the officers, that they should be able to be coming out, that they should know and attest uh, to the public that indeed their children were born like that, you know. So we need the statistics in Zambia to show they should be keeping statistics of intersex babies that are born in health uh, facilities for people to start appreciating. The Zambia Law Development Commission is a statutory body which was established under the Act of Parliament. The commission, which falls under the Ministry of Justice, performs many functions. With the only two classification of gender that is recognized by the law in this country, the question many are asking is will there be a paradigm shift in the law? Unfortunately, Effie, I think the issue of intersex people or intersex individuals is not something that we have discussed as a commission. It is not something that stakeholders or other people um, within the sector or institutions have discussed. Maybe I should also add that um, for ZLDC, we carry out our work either at the request of various government ministries or even civil society or any member of the public can actually walk in and request us to revise a particular piece of legislation. We also receive instructions directly from the Minister of Justice. And so far in the work that we've done as a commission, we have not had any requests. Dr. Chiwone Sio is a consultant psychiatrist and national mental health coordinator and now looks at the impact of giving birth to an intersex baby on the mother. I feel there's a lot that goes on in individuals with uh, DSD. Remember, from the time of birth, the mother uh, is traumatized. There's some myths. A lot of these myths are that someone is cursed, you know, it's a bad omen, uh, it's witchcraft, and you know. So because of that, there's a lot of stigma involved. So these mothers, in the case of uh, in the rural areas, they don't even come out. When they've had like home births, they will hide these children. And then also children who are born intersex also have developmental issues and they also have learning difficulties. It is common for surgery to be done on a baby's genitals and also for the child to be given male or female hormones as they go through puberty. But sometimes the gender pick does not match the gender identity the young person will grow up to have. The Human Rights Commission is calling for the postponement of medical interventions until intersex people are old enough to decide for themselves what gender they can identify with. As a Human Rights Commission, we are in the process of starting to engage the medical personnel to start appreciating that they should take time if they want to uh, fix in a medical way, uh, you know, intersex uh, organs so that they should do that only when they've affirmed the gender identity of a, a, a person. And that can be done after the hormones have developed at a certain stage, a puberty stage. And this is the Ministry of Health's response. Early surgery sometimes can be a problem because you may assign a different gender and later you find that this person develops the other one. For example, a person may assign as a girl and then you cut the, that organ which was prominent like a male organ, okay? You cut it and then this person, as it's growing, you find that maybe the testicular hormones, the male hormones become more prominent and becomes, looks more of a male, and has feelings towards maybe the female, yet is assigned as already a female, that can be a problem if that operation was done much earlier. So indeed, it is true that um, it, the, the surgeries should be delayed. Management of intersex persons is complex. If the karyotype is 46, XY, meaning they are boys genetically, then you tailor your management towards this karyotype. So, which might also involve what we call genital reconstructive uh, surgery. So, you then plan for genital reconstructive surgery in such patients. We have problem, for example, just to access the specific, you know, let's say hormones uh, supplements for these uh, individuals. It's not easy. 
um, they're not in our, you know, essential, let's say, uh, drug kits. Um, and then um, coupled with uh, the complex and very specialized uh, uh, corrective surgery, cosmetic surgery that might not be as, you know, uh, accessible as uh, you would want it to, to, to be. The birth of an intersex person prompts a long-term management strategy that involves many professionals working with a family. At the moment, Zambia has no management protocol on intersex for medical practitioners. What is being done to put one in place? As a ministry, we are in the process of uh, revising the reproductive health policy and uh, that is uh, one of uh, the proposed uh, uh, topics that need to be looked at and uh, guide the practitioners in terms of uh, how they should be able to handle the, uh, the people who have uh, disorders of uh, sexual uh, development. Intersex people often experience prejudice and discrimination simply because their bodies do not conform to society's expectations about sex and gender. In some countries, those with visible intersex traits, such as ambiguous genitalia, face violence. Because of uh, the same stigma and discrimination, you find that even if the healthcare services are there, they will not go and access those services because they don't want to be discriminated. Even just access to, to social services, even just as simple as accessing a public toilet becomes a, uh, a difficult. So there are a whole, a whole lot in, 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 uh, in simple terms, I would say, what a woman faces and a man faces, an intersex person also faces. The only thing which is adding on to that or making it uh, different is the issue of not understanding who an intersex person is. Catherine and Paso have an appeal to make. My urgent appeal is on putting an end to those surgeries. And uh, on the other hand, I understand Zambia will be conducting, conducting its next census. For me, I would say, um, including intersex people, to be counted to ascertain the number of intersex people uh, in Zambia would also help the government to also plan what kind of services are needed for this uh, group of people. Paso, just to check, you check the kuli murungu. So, when I was in the registration, I was in the pita moini. 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 I was Intersex people exist all around the world from all different races and walks of life. With this scenario, there's a general feeling that intersex persons need to be properly understood. You know, in the developed countries, uh, when it comes to sex, you have a lot of options, whether you're male, female, intersex, binary, everything. But we don't have that in Zambia, and it's high time um, that came about. Surgery is not the biggest correction. What the biggest correction is, what do they think or their self-esteem? That's the biggest thing. The rights of intersex persons around the world are being violated every day simply because the term intersex or disorder of sexual development is still widely misunderstood. But with public awareness around intersex, many are hoping that the family, society and the state will have sympathy and empathy towards intersex persons. That's all the time we had for you on this week's edition of News in Depth, where FM Pande was looking at the challenges that intersex persons are facing and what is being done to address their needs. I've been your host, Ruth Kamui. Join us next week when we bring you another interesting edition of News in Depth. Bye for now. <laughs>